We're all about talking about everything that's currently under the sun, every issue that every South African is currently facing right here in Mzonzi. Yeah, First yeah. First of all, back on your television. Yes, it was it always is amazing to be joining you guys. From the hours of 4 to 5, like my lovely lady over there had mentioned, today is an amazing day and we have an incredible Akona in the studio who is from DAG, who is all about speaking about underlying issues that are happening in South Africa, that is all about poverty and inequality in urban areas. It's such a pleasure having you on the show. It's so good to see young people who are um, driven about the social issues that we currently face in South Africa. We're very passionate about changing the country. Some, young, some other young people are all about the glitz and the glam. So good to see young people who are very passionate about changing Umzanti. Mm. Let's talk about poverty. Do you think we'll get to a point where there is a bridge between mm. the poor, the, the middle, middle class, class and, and, the and, class. And, and, yeah, and the rich? Well, I think in terms of the national planning frameworks, the NTP, there are good intentions, there are principles that are speaking to that. But if you are looking at the realities on the ground, the gap is widening. Huge. It's yeah. widening if you're looking at the Gini coefficient. It's widening. It's not getting any better. Yeah. So, so it needs us as citizens to be active now in trying to see what could be the real issue. Yeah. We've seen corruption. We're seeing all these bad things happening. But what are we doing as citizens of the country in terms yeah. of trying to close that gap, to mm. bridge that gap and between the poor and the rich? And what is you as DNG doing, DAG? Development Action Group, DAG stands for Devel Development Action Group. Yeah. It's an NGO that was established in 1986. Our particular focus is around housing and human settlements mm -hmm. for the poor and marginalized communities. Mm. We sort of try to support communities to get access to housing, access to dignified housing. Mm. So there's a host of principles that guide our work in terms of advocacy, in terms of demonstrating through projects, through mm. partnerships with government, in terms of building capacity of our community leaders to be able to take their issues forward. Yeah, mm. poverty is a huge, huge mm. issue, social issue in mm. South yeah. Africa, let's say th throughout Africa. Mm. How does DAG go about tackling this issue that we're currently facing? Mm. I think for us, I think that's a very good question, but I think for us, what is important for us is that we know there is not a one size fits all yeah. Uh, yeah. solution. Yeah. Um, we are working with housing and human settlements mm. and also with poor and marginal com communities. And whilst there are these principles that are guiding the planning frameworks in terms of poverty, unemployment, and also local economic development, ours is, is, is focused on housing and human settlements, the question mm. of access to housing and human settlements, yeah. and how do we get communities to interact in the space to participate meaningfully in order to resolve the question of poverty. Because if you want to see sustainable communities, then poverty is one of the issues that, that are a, a, a barrier to sustainable communities. Mm. So. Whilst you're addressing housing, indirectly you're also going to address other social ills that are yeah. within our community. Housing, you mentioned housing. Yeah. Is RDP the kind of housing that people should be getting, getting and living in? Like when you say housing, do you think the RDP system that we currently mm. have is, 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 is working? Well, that is a rather yeah, contest contentious question. But what I think, um, um, government offers different housing typologies. Like I said, there's not a one-size-fits-all. So the RTB type of a house is, is just one solution mm. to, 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 to different uh, income bands. Mm. Whether or not it's the right housing uh, that you should be giving people, as long as ours as Diego are saying, if mm. you're giving housing opportunities, they should be in well-located areas yeah. where people have access to other amenities, yeah. not only housing, because housing is not the only solution yeah. for the social ills that we have. Yeah. So the, house, the RTP type of a house, it can be a solution for a particular segment of the market. Okay. As long as it is well located, as long as it, 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 it ensures that people have access to other amenities. Mm. So building a, an RTP house at the periphery of the city, uh, we feel as an organization that, is not, that, that does not address the question the of other uh, ills that are within our communities. Mm. So you mentioned something, uh, you mentioned that you did start this organization, or rather the organization started in 1996. 1996. It's been a long time. Are there any sort of improvements that you guys are seeing? I know um, when you go to rather other 
in settlements of areas you see a lot of shacks and you mm. still see buildings that are not fit for human mm. beings to be living in while others are living on the opposite side of the end with 10 million houses mm. when they don't even living in the house so that's okay. what are the where where are we saying we draw the line how are we moving forward is there any progress because i feel like at some stage we don't see the progress because we still see the problem and maybe you guys are working towards uh, a progress so can you just let us know if there are some sort of improvements yeah. moving on um just to paint the context that within our city of cape town there mm. are over 200 informal settlements yeah. and currently takes the city about 20 years uh, to, to 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 upgrade mm. uh, any one informal settlement so you can tell that we 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 have a problem now, now, what needs to happen here is that we need to get all people in the room. We have the best policies in the country. I think we have the best constitution in the country. And, and one can tell that there is a gap between yeah. implementation and the policies. Yeah. So who needs to be there? Mm. I, I don't think it's time for us now to be pointing finger, fingers at one or the other. Mm. I think we, ours as DEC, we, we are saying, let us just build the capacity of the communities mm. so that they are also actively involved in the processes of upgrading their own communities. Mm. Yeah. So I think capacity building is that is just one component. Yeah. There are yeah. other components in terms of uh, the system in itself, the government system in itself, how do we simplify it such that uh, there is access. Mm. And we can already see that our city is not delivering at scale. Yeah. Um, the, the housing database is growing uh, yeah. over 500,000 now of people in the wow. waiting list. Mm. Wow. How do we resolve that issue if our province or the city delivers just over 10,000 units mm. a year? Now, if the city takes uh, 15 to 20 years to upgrade one informal settlement, what needs to be there? I think we need to sit down quite a, a, and have an intentional conversation in terms of how do we resolve this issue? Because the policies are there, the legislation is there, funding models are there. Yes, we have a treasure, a, a fiscal that is, um, d d is, is d diminishing, but how do we work together in terms of trying to resolve these issues? Yeah, mm. I also think job creation is, will be one of the um, solutions mm. to people affording their own houses. Mm. And of course, I think the government needs to um, get inside our banks and stop for our banks to stop being irrational mm. when it comes to giving black people things such as bonds and of course loans mm. to buy houses affordable houses mm. let's talk about the issue of land mm. um, what do you think is the main issue right now because we want the land back darlings mm. what do you think is the issue um, of surrounding our government <laughs> actually placing people back, giving <laughs> the land back to the people well <laughs> that is that is a very very good question as well uh, but I think the question of access to land is also brought. Mm. Uh, whilst we're talking about these programs that government is currently discussing in terms of giving people back land or land expropriation, mm. I think that is there's a different understanding for each person in each of these stakeholders. How do we demystify this language mm. so that we all have a similar understanding of what access land, to land means mm. and wha what giving people the land back to the people means, means yeah. yeah so we need to have that discussion yeah. we cannot just say let's get the land back what is that whose land mm. we have government land we have uh, private land what are we going to use the land for what are the yeah. intentions mm. there's there can never be an assumption that every land that is, is going to be given back will be for housing for instance mm. yeah. uh, is it urban land is it rural land and, mm. and, and, and so we need to have those discussions we need to dis 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 disaggregate this mm. whole discussion and take it into bits and pieces. Um, and yeah. you spoke about something you said mm. that instead of this new South Africa pointing mm. fingers, we need mm. to work together. Now, mm. who are you working together with as DAG um, to make sure that we move on and we see some sort of progress? Because mm. you mentioned also that South Africa can only, can only provide mm. 20,000 or 10,000 uh, per I mean, year. The city. Yeah, currently. the city currently. So, how can we as South Africans, or rather, if you want to meet in Cape Town? Yeah, just, okay. just over 10,000. Me and how can we say actually we want to help? Or how, who are you working with to make sure that this housing issue is addressed and is moving forward as the years go by? Um, I think what we, our intention as DEC is to first build the capacity of communities in order for them to be able to have a conversation at a similar level as officials and other civil society organizations. Mm -hmm. I think they, there's also a call for civil society organizations to come into the party. Yeah. For everyone involved, the private sector, because we're seeing people being displaced by the private sector, for instance, in Woodstock. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah. So how do we then begin to have those conversations mm. with everyone that is involved in mm. order for us to be able to get to a point where we can say, 
uh, the city is, we can, we can see the city is divided. We have a spatially segregated city. It yeah. still remains the same 25 years into democracy. Yeah. So if we're not having these conversations, mm. that are saying how do we think about spatial redress? Mm. Um, how do we bring everyone into the room? Mm. Yeah. How do we talk in a city affordable housing? We're not saying RTP housing in the inner city. We're saying inner city affordable housing exactly. for everyone. Yeah. So how do we bridge that gap? So mm. we need to, it's, it's, it's a question of conversations. It's a question of building the capacity of our communities so that they are not only using one default way yeah. of voicing their concerns, yeah. which is going to the streets, Yeah. which I think that's what has been happening. Mm. They just go to the streets. How mm. do we then bring them up to speed in terms of policies, in terms of holding the, these different spheres of government into account, in terms of hold, holding the local sphere of government to account, in terms of being part of prioritizing projects within their own communities. Yeah, now we're in a point where um, the working class is, mm. is moved from these upper areas in Cape Town, mm. let's say Woodstock, mm. South River, mm. whose responsibility is to place those people? Is it the private business owner who removes those, person, those mm. people, or is it the government? Whose responsibility it is? Because government, to be honest, they seem to be dodging this. Mm. Whose responsibility is we have like one minute? Mm. In 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's everyone's responsibility. Yeah. It is, it is uh, the government's responsibility, it is the civil society's responsibility to come into the party to surface this, that we have a problem of gentrification. How do we resolve it? Poor people and working class people are being pushed out of the inner city. Mm. Opportunities are in the inner city. We need yeah. to have those discussions. Is this right. city accommodative to the working class? Mm. To, to some extent, yes. As a because we, I, I would say yes and no. Okay. As an organization, we are, try, we are currently trying to work with the city and other civil society organizations in terms of developing an inclusionary housing policy that speaks to affordable housing for, for the working class. Right. So, so that is, those are discussions that are, that are currently happening. And I think on the news, and uh, the mayoral committee member on Sunday made a pronouncement mm. uh, for house, the mayoral committee member of housing and settlements made a pronouncement on inclusionary housing as well. I'm going to have to close <laughs> over. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you and learning more about housing. But right now, we're going to take a little bit of a short break. So see you after this.